There are a lot of cult classics from the 1980s, but Roadhouse stands somewhere near the top. Sure, many of its fans wouldn't label it as such since they lovingly, legitimately, and unironically adore it. But there's no use in arguing it belongs in one camp over another, or that it is unapologetically everything it sets out to be. But it, and its cult following, couldn't have happened without a few broken ribs, a don't take no producer, and some pervy late night phone calls to a star spouse. And yes, somehow it involves Bill Murray. So, pour some suds and rip some throats because we're gonna find out what the fuck happened to this movie. Roadhouse comes from a script by David Lee Henry, a pseudonym for R. Lance Hill and Hillary Hankin, and tells of a dude with a mullet named Dalton hired to cool the double deuce bar all while developing a romance with a doctor who has also caught the eye of a dastardly, by 80s movie standards at least, businessman. Coming to the table of superstar producer Joel Silver, Roadhouse would be assigned to director Rowdy Harrington, who wasn't entirely sold on the project as his follow-up to thriller Jack's Back but was convinced by Silver, who revealed that Patrick Swayze, a Hollywood darling after Dirty Dancing, would be starring. To also draw in any prospects, Silver summed up the movie as boobs and bombs, while Harrington saw it as a cartoon, also noting that Silver had a penchant for making movies geared towards teenage boys. As peaceful warrior James Dalton Patrick Swayze would headline Roadhouse, while Kelly Lynch of Cocktail and Drugstore Cowboy would land love interest Dr. Elizabeth Clay. And to prepare for her role, Lynch actually shadowed medical professionals, which we now know was completely useless since she doesn't do any medical work in the movie. Lynch wasn't entirely sure if she even wanted the part though, saying, okay, I don't understand what this is. There's a big wheel truck, there's a bad guy, there's a doctor in a mini dress, and there are bouncers. So many elements were thrown into this movie that it just didn't make any sense to me. But Silver reminded her that she had a contract with United Artists and didn't get much of a say, especially since original choice Annette Benning wouldn't be hired due to her lack of a chemistry with Swayze. She's more of a baity gal anyway. Taking the part of Dalton's mentor, Wade Garrett, would be Sam Elliott, another party who wasn't interested at first, only being talked into it by Harrington, who told him, if you don't do this movie, I'm fucked. But Silver, who Elliott called a throwback to old Hollywood, may have nailed it even better, telling the legend, you've got a lot of baggage, and it makes you right for the part. There too would be Ben Gazzara as Brad Wesley, a role first offered to James Garner, who turned it down, Kevin Tighe as Frank Tillman, and Red West as Red Webster, whose auto supply shop gets all blowed up in a stunt that cost $25,000. West actually has a pretty cool music background, as he was a close friend of Elvis Presley's and even a member of the Memphis Mafia. Also on the music front was blind guitarist Jeff Healy. With a budget of $15 million, production on Roadhouse commenced in April 1988 with filming taking place in California, a set standing in for Missouri's fake Double Deuce although some interiors were shot inside of a now-defunct bar in California called The Bandstand, also once called Cowboy Boogie. Other locations included Santa Clarita and Valencia. It's probably no surprise that much of the behind-the-scenes goodness of Roadhouse stems from the action, so much of which seems so silly and dated 35 years after its release. Even director Harrington said he wanted to pay homage to silent comedians, the Keystone Cops. What might be more of a shock is that the cast was encouraged to do their own stunts. As Elliot put it, it was a very physical job. I mean, you hear all that bullshit about it's all stunt doubles and all that shit. Well, 
It isn't. All the actors, as far as I know, did their own fighting. I fucking got the shit kicked out of me for the entire film. Still, none of it was possible without stunt coordinator Charlie Picerny, who had previously done stunts for Die Hard, Beverly Hills Cop 2, and more. And there was also nine-time black belter Benny the Jet Yurkides, who had a leg up in recognizing that Swayze could have been a pro kickboxer after seeing him in action. There too would be a lot of explosives work by Al Desaro, who Harrington said might have been in prison for pyromania if he wasn't in the film business. Oh, we can picture that. By pretty much all accounts, Roadhouse was a fun set to be on. And yes, the cast knew how ridiculous some of those one-liners were, including that one, which was originally written as, damn boy, I thought you were good. Although whether it was a Marshall Teague improv or a line tossed in by Joel Silver remains debated. Which brings us to the scene that we all know and love. The scene in question, in which Dalton chases down Jimmy Reno on foot and tackles him off of a motorcycle, the one stunt Swayze wasn't allowed to perform, although they let him take a 20-foot plunge into a truck before launching into an epic fist fight. That fight, the high point of the movie, took a full five days and more than 70 takes to nail, and with it came the bumps, bruises, and breaks that show up on the screen. Teague, who got the role after Scott Glenn turned it down, took to antagonizing Swayze to get more out of that fight, firing up the star, who also wanted it all to look as real as possible. And real it was, with the two having to be broken up at one point because they thought Swayze and Teague were actually beating the shit out of each other. Which they kind of were, since Teague gave Swayze broken ribs, forcing him to undergo four total surgeries, while Swayze would also have two and a half ounces of fluid drained from his knee. Who says pain don't hurt? Don't worry, Teague got his too, ending up with a broken eye socket. Despite the injuries, it was actually his haircut that Swayze called the bane of my existence. But it is a damn good fight, a standout of over-the-top hand-to-hand combat in 80s cinema, which is saying something, ending with one of the wildest moments of the decade, Swayze ripping out Reno's throat. For that, just one take. But it wasn't all pain on the set, there was some love too. And we don't just mean the flock of female fans trying to get a glimpse, and probably more, of Patrick Swayze. As far as that moment between Swayze and Lynch, which starts against a fireplace, she remembered they really liked everything about the way that scene looked, with the blonde hair against the rocks behind me, but I was like, isn't this kind of mean? So. They put a thin padding under my dress so you can't see it, but he's still slamming me against the rocks, so I had to be careful not to hit my head. Thank God Patrick was so strong. He too had some fond memories, saying, the love scene is probably the hottest I've ever done, and clothes don't even come off. It might not be that memorable for most of the male audience, but there is one family that can't get enough. As it turns out, Bill Murray and his brothers have made it a habit to ring up Kelly Lynch's husband, writer Mitch Glazer, every time that scene comes on, altering their voices and informing him, you don't know me, but your wife is getting slammed up against the wall by Patrick Swayze. She's not putting up much of a fight. For the Murray brothers, no time of night is off limits for the prank call. Murray isn't the only famous fan either, as Anthony Bourdain counted himself as among its biggest supporters. But long before the lewd messages, Roadhouse had to hit theaters, and it did on May 19th, 1989, opening against newbies Fright Night 2 and Miracle Mile. But there would be other movies keeping it from hitting number one, with its $6 million opening weekend landing it just behind the previous week's champ, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and ahead of five weaker Field of Dreams. And that's where it would peak, with a total gross of $30 million Roadhouse may have doubled its budget, but it wasn't exactly a smash, barely beating out a re-release of Disney's Peter Pan on the year-end charts. No amount of money. Critically, 
It was a disaster, even going on to earn five Razzie nominations, tying for the most that year with The Karate Kid Part 3 and Star Trek V The Final Frontier. The nominations, Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Actor, Worst Supporting Actor, for Ben Gazzara, and Worst Screenplay, losing most to The Final Frontier. Damn boy, I thought you were good. But Roadhouse's reputation decades on can't be denied. Sure, it has a lot of porn, a sprinkle of homoeroticism, and easily mockable sequences, but it has actually proved useful in real-life situations. Following the 2014 murder of Eric Garner, which sparked outrage and protests against police departments for use of excessive force, the NYPD implemented the movie's three simple rules as part of a new retraining program. 1. Never underestimate your opponent. Expect the unexpected. 2. Take it outside. Never start anything inside the bar unless it's absolutely necessary. And three, be nice. Okay, so they did modify these a bit, and we're still waiting to see the long-term effects, but at least they weren't getting inspiration from Denzel in Training Day. The movie truly found its fan base and would later do remarkably well on the home video market, already beginning to build a newfound fan base. As such, it's really no surprise that studios have gone back to the Roadhouse well, first producing a 2006 direct-to-video sequel, which followed the exploits of Dalton's son. There too, most surprisingly, was an off-Broadway production in 2003, whose full title is, ready for this? Roadhouse, the stage version of the cinema classic that starred Patrick Swayze, except this one stars Tymac from the 80s cult classic The Last Dragon, wearing a blonde mullet wig. Yes, there were multiple sold out shows. In 2015, six years after the death of Patrick Swayze, a remake was on the table with Ronda Rousey starring and Nick Cassavetes directing. That was KO'd but a new one was finally greenlit and is out in 2024 with Jake Gyllenhaal in the lead. But we won't spend too much time here. As it has so much going on behind the scenes, original Roadhouse writer R. Lance Hill claiming copyright infringement, the release moving from theatrical to streaming, the subsequent protests from director Doug Lyman, the allegations of AI use to replicate actors' voices amid the SAG after strike, that it could very well end up getting its own episode of what the f happened to this movie. But we should still note that Marshall Teague found the fight scenes in this remake humorous <laughs> and that we highly doubt Jake Gyllenhaal saw the injuries that Swayze did but there is no replacing the original Roadhouse which has an intense following that has inspired theme nights and screenings around the country typically within college crowds no doubt this was spawned partly by seemingly constant spots in AMC's rotation, and we can still see exactly why Joel Silver called it the best drive-in movie ever made, even though most of us probably never saw it at the drive-in. As Rowdy Harrington put it, it's harder to throw a meatball past a hungry dog than it is to make a picture that endures. Now that's a one-liner worthy of Roadhouse. Now this. Play something with balls.